Hey guys, Happy New Year! Our first story is titled Am I the a-hole for telling my sister it's a bad idea to have another baby? I-28 female had a big fight with my sister, 30 female, on Christmas who told me she's pregnant. Backstory My sister, let's call her Sarah, suffers from bipolar, depression, anxiety, etc. Sarah had a child early this year, let's call her Anna. Sarah developed severe postpartum depression slash postpartum anxiety on top of her other issues. My brother-in-law travels for work and even with the pandemic, has spent most Monday to Friday out of state. Sarah gets disability due to her mental illnesses and doesn't work. Our parents work, live out of state and are high risk for COVID and they help Sarah in other ways. I live less than a 10-minute drive from Sarah. Sarah had a breakdown and was admitted to the hospital where she stayed a month when Anna wasn't even two months. During this time, Anna lived with me since everyone else was with Sarah. After, it developed into a routine where Sarah would spend most of the day in bed, unable to care for Anna, and I'd have to take the baby. I've spent nearly a year now being the main caretaker for Anna Monday to Friday, plus trying to work from home. Anna has spent 75% of her weeks with me. The other 25% is when brother-in-law is home or when Sarah is at my house with Anna. Even weekends when brother-in-law is home, I've had Anna 30% of the time as Sarah gets in destructive moods and it isn't safe. My sister swears she never hurts Anna. To be fair, when Sarah is having a good day, she's a good mom to her. But she can't manage most days and a precedent has been set that I'll be there for Anna when my sister can't. Sarah, brother-in-law and Anna came over for Christmas. We were exchanging presents and I opened one for my sister. It was a pregnancy test and one C that said, baby number two coming August 2021. The only thing I could say was, are you serious? With an edge to my voice. Sarah lost it when I wasn't overwhelmed with joy. I approached Sarah after a bit and I said plainly that I wasn't excited about this and I thought it was a bad idea and explained why. I told her I was worried about her mental health and unsure how she was going to care for another baby when Anna spent most of her life with me. I also said I was anxious about getting stuck watching both Anna and a baby. I told her that I wouldn't do it unless they paid me to be their full-time nanny. I told her how stressful it is working from home and watching Anna. I told her it's unfair to me and her kids aren't my responsibility. I'm at my limit and it just all boiled over. Sarah told me that I'm not being supportive, I'm shaming her mental illnesses, and I'm calling her a bad mom. She spiraled again during our convo and became destructive. My brother-in-law was able to get her to leave, leaving Anna with me. They got Anna the next day, and I haven't heard from them since. Brother-in-law is home through mid-January, though. Am I the a-hole for telling my sister it's a bad idea to have another baby? Edit. I do want to add that CPS has been involved since Sarah's hospital stay last spring. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. I was prepared to call you the a-hole because nothing much can be done now that your sister is pregnant. Then I saw that you've been caring for the kid she already has. I told her that I wouldn't do it unless they paid me to be their full-time nanny. Good for you. Stick to your guns. She's using you. Sarah told me that I'm not being supportive. No, you're just not being her free nanny. She's not being supportive of you by trying to tie you down and negatively affecting your life. She spiraled again during our convo and became destructive. Oh, great. And she can't handle being told no. This is exactly why she should get help instead of pregnant. At least we can hope she gets both. Edit. Yes, I know she could have an abortion. Poor word choice. What I meant was that it's much easier to convince someone not to get pregnant than to terminate a pregnancy that they, however stupidly, want. At this point, there is probably nothing Opie can say to convince her to change course. She can only refuse to play nanny. I was also fully prepared to call Opie the a-hole. Who would tell someone who's already pregnant that they shouldn't have the baby? But wow, she's not the a-hole at all. The sister is a humongous a-hole especially for giving a positive pregnancy test to Opie as a gift. She was all but saying, I'm having another baby for you to take care of. Unbelievable. Not day hole. She can't have babies and expect you to raise them. Stick to your guns. It is not your responsibility to raise someone else's children. Not just a she issue. Brother-in-law needs a new job and to step up big time. 
Obi is enabling their behavior by bailing them out. I highly doubt brother-in-law would have knocked up the sister again if he was pulling his weight with Anna. This isn't a Reddit question. You need to contact social services and find out what programs are available in your area that would help your sister care for her children and protect those children. Thanks. I don't want to get into it too much, but CPS has been involved since her hospital trip last spring. I do appreciate your concern, though. Now, for the next story. Am I the a-hole for not paying for my former substance addict brother's dog's surgery, leading to its death, because I believed he was trying to scam me again? Title is a bit of a doozy, but sums it up basically. My 27 female, brother 32 male, has struggled with addiction for a long portion of his life. It started when I was in middle school, and he would steal my parents' money, sell their things, and stole medication from some of our relatives. My parents would tell me to never trust my brother, and nearly everything valuable in our home was kept under lock and key. My parents were always trying to get him help, and after an intervention, they had a massive fight, and he just left when I was in 10th grade. When I was a college sophomore, he reached back out to me and we started having a really tentative relationship. He promised me he was getting better, that he was seeking help. He told me that he had been in rehab, but he couldn't afford it anymore and our parents weren't returning his calls. He even showed me an admittance form, or some other type of official-looking medical document, that proved he was in rehab. He asked me to loan him $3,000 for rehab, because he needed to pay tomorrow or they'd kick him out. I had been working my butt off, and that money was meant to pay for this semester's tuition fee. He ghosted me afterwards. Obviously, it was a scam for D money. You probably think I'm stupid for believing him, but I really wanted to believe him. I was just an ignorant college kid back then, who really, really wanted her brother back. After that incident, I learned to never trust him again like my parents originally warned me. Last year, he reached out to my parents and I again. We haven't met in person, because of COVID, but we've had a couple Zooms and texts. It's just a really tentative, barely there relationship. I think my parents are just scared of getting hurt again. He promised us he was actually clean this time and wanted to stay with us for an extended period of time to prove it. He hasn't asked us for any money or anything, so I was beginning to believe he was actually clean. Then he asked me for $3,000 for surgery for his dog. He sent me the vet documents as well. Honestly, I was so incredibly upset. My first reaction was that this was obviously a scam, and he hadn't changed at all. He had talked about his dog slash shown us pictures before, but I thought he had forged the vet documents. I didn't respond at all, even though he was begging me. I definitely had the money, and I've paid for the vet fees for my aunt's cat before. I love animals. If I believed him, I probably would have paid. But I didn't, and his dog died yesterday. My brother called me a dog killer and even sent me pictures of his dog's corpse, so now I obviously know it wasn't a scam. He told me that with family like me, who needed enemies? And that is because my parents and I never trust him, don't support him, that his life turned to crap, and now his best friend was dead because of me. Obviously, I feel incredibly guilty. Edit. I'm getting a lot of comments slash info asking why I didn't call the vet or pay in person, and I thought I'd just edit a reply to one of the comments into the post as well. I hope you can understand that my immediate reaction was very emotional, which made it hard for me to think of doing that. I called him right after, and I asked him what the surgery was for, slash the name of his dog's condition, and he couldn't tell me right away. He was like stammering and said, it's something with his stomach, but I forgot the name, which made me think he was lying to me. So I just hang up and ignored all of his calls slash texts. Looking back, it's not unimaginable that someone doesn't know the name of the surgery, but from my perspective, it looked like he was scrambling to support his lie. Also, paying in person wasn't an option. My brother lives in a different city. Not day haul. It's not uncommon for substance addicts to hurt their pets in order to get score. And there are rescues that will help people pay for vet care that they can't afford. Or he could have surrendered the dog to a shelter and the shelter could have found it better care. I worked at a shelter so I do know a little bit about this. I actually think you're still being scammed. I wouldn't feel bad because he has burned you before. It's kind of ironic that it's the same exact amount. A little too ironic. Edit. I don't know how common it is for addicts to mistreat their dogs to get meds, but it has been reported in the news. It is something that is taught to vets. I have several friends who are vets and we've talked about it.
I'm not trying to say that all or even most addicts will abuse animals. Kind of ironic that it's for the same exact amount. A little too ironic. That was my thoughts too. Not a day haul. Don't feel guilty. Your brother took in a pet he couldn't provide for. And when it became ill, instead of surrendering it to an animal rescue or a humane society, he chose to let it die in pain. If you'd given him the money, there's no guarantee you would have actually used it for the vet bills. There has been a recent spate of addicts injuring their pets so they can get opioids through the vet's office. Not a day haul, and he absolutely could still be scamming you. How do you know that's not a friend's dog he's been lying about, and who was humanely euthanized for other reasons? How do you know he didn't hurt the dog in an attempt to get pain meds for it that he could use? And yes, this absolutely does happen. There's even a database vets can look people in to see if they've done it before. Even if in the end, he told the absolute truth and the dog died because he needed 3,000 for surgery, it's still 100% not your fault. His dog, his responsibility, and he has no one to blame but himself that his family didn't believe him when he needed them too. Even if he was completely honest this time, it's still not your fault, OP. It's a cry wolf situation he created for himself. He's at fault. The next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for kicking my sister out after she refused to help me with vet bills? Backstory, I, 21 female, managed to move out on my own four months ago in a different state to my family. I moved with my cats and one dog. My sister, 24 female, got kicked out a little over three months ago because she has a rocky relationship with my mother. She came to live with me, something I wasn't happy about. I thought I had finally escaped my family. And then she called me crying about being homeless, so I agreed. She's saving up to buy her first home and has a lot of money saved, 60000 something she shows me on a regular basis. I am not that rich, as I just spent my savings on house deposits, university, and moving. She refused to pay me rent and made me out to be a monster when I asked because she was trying to save money. She drives my car, never pays for petrol, and three weeks ago, rammed the side into the gate. Something she said wasn't her fault until she admitted it. The insurance almost wrote my car off. I had to pay a lot in excess, so all my savings are just gone. My dog was in an accident yesterday where she tore a tendon in her leg. She's had surgery last year on it. She is limping, and I'm crying because that surgery cost $3,000. Now she needs it again. I asked my sister if I could loan the money off her, and she looked at me and said, I don't have any money for that. I got mad, but I know she has a right to say no. It's her money. So I told her she can't live with me anymore, because she was the reason all the savings I had left were gone, that it's okay she's saving money, but I can't save money with her living with me. She is angry at me, so is my family. She went back to my mom's and I've been told I'm not welcome while she still lives there. Am I the a-hole for kicking her out? I feel like it was petty, but she knew I had no way to pay it after spending so much money fixing my car that she ruined. Edit. The excess was $2,500 as I am younger than 25, so insurance has a larger excess. I told her I would give her back $500 when I get paid as she said she would pay for the car. She didn't, and is now saying she wasn't at fault. Now for the top comments. Not a hull. I say escalate the situation and go block everyone and go no contact unless you get help to pay for the car. Make it about the car, then you will have money for the dog. Tell your family she flouted money in your face, crashed your car, and refused to pay rent. She can get bent for all you care. Keep emotion out and logic in. Yeah, this. Escalate the situation. They're completely disregarding you and playing favorites with your sister. You need to show them that you aren't their punching bag and that their actions have consequences. Not a hole. She needs to pay for the damage to your car. She's not responsible for the dog, but she did wreck your car. I told her we could call it even, and I just give her an extra 500 later. As she said, she would pay for it, but now is saying she won't. I will go no contact. Mom doesn't know about the money she has saved, or she would make her get her own place. I will keep bringing up the car, but I think she isn't going to give me anything. So as of next week, I will be blocking. Thank you for your insight. I don't know if this is cruel or petty, but maybe it's time to tell your mom she has that kind of money? Now for the last story. Am I the a-hall for not splitting my daughter's electrolysis fund? When my daughter was born, 
She had a veritable fur rug of black, curly hair on her back. It was super cute in a baby, but did not fall out like many weird hairs do on babies. Y'all, I cannot stress this enough. Her father is Italian, and she had more hair on her back than he did. After talking with my father, we started a small fund for her with the sole purpose to afford electrolysis in the future. Now, 13 years later, that fund is causing an issue. Essentially, there is about $5,000 in there. While she is not aware of this fund, and currently the hair is a light blonde and does not bother her, her doctor believes that by the time she is 16, the hair could become dark and coarse. While I love my daughter unconditionally, I also know that girls are often teased for physical appearance pieces they cannot control. Her doctor has confirmed that laser treatment might be uncomfortable but would be otherwise harmless and would probably solve the problem. Bleaching may be a temporary solution, but we would also pay for this from the fund. Recently, my older child has started college. Due to some funding issues with scholarships, we wound up owing $3,000 in tuition, slash room, slash board for the first semester. The second semester shortfall will be similar, but the issue should be corrected in his second year. Because I lost my job with the pandemic, I called my dad, who has set aside a similar fund for each grandchild, whether they have need or not, and he tapped my oldest fund. My stepmother is livid. She thinks I should have simply tapped my daughter's fund, since it was for cosmetics, and by keeping the fund, I'm saying my daughter's appearance is more important than my other child's education. I can kind of see her point, except that there are funds for all the grandchildren, and if she doesn't use it for hair removal, it is still my daughter's money. It is worth noting my father and stepmother have totally separate finances, so this money does not affect her. So I am, in fact, valuing my daughter's physical appearance over my older child's education, making me the a-hole? Not the a-hole. First off, your stepmom has zero say in what your dad chooses to do with his money. Second, you're not valuing your daughter's appearance over another daughter's education. You're valuing the psychological impact this could have on your daughter and your ability to prevent that. Both are equally important and both need to be attended to. As someone with an Italian father and lots of dark, buddy hair, I 100% agree that this is about the psychological well-being of your daughter, and not her vanity. Side note, OP, look into laser hair removal when the time comes. It's a bit more expensive than electrolysis, but it's significantly more comfortable, quicker, and significantly more effective in my personal experience. Not day haul. Kids are cruel. There are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I wish it wasn't so, but that's just the facts of life. That's not a cosmetic fund. That's a mental wellness fund. When I was in school, there was this one girl that was just ridiculously hairy. Thick black hairs. People called her the gorilla girl. Luckily, I wasn't one of them. Not because I'm a saint or anything. I could be a knee as well, but simply because I thought she was a cool girl. It did have an emotional toll on her. You're being great parents. Not day haul. Also, it's not as if Opie shames or forces her daughter or anything. It's just in case her daughter wants it or the hair become coarse. Good planning on Opie's part. And that's the end of this video, folks. As always, leave a comment and hit like and subscribe. And if you want more of this content, turn your notification on to get updated on the latest videos. And I'll catch you with the next one. Stay safe.